Hi guys, welcome to Tutelix Architecture Series. Today, we will be discussing Ankit's Secure Architecture. This architecture is made by me. My name is Ankit Vashisht and I will be discussing the same. Okay, so basically, let's suppose there is a tool. Okay guys, uh, let me just open the link to my blog so guys i have uh, given the link of my blog in the description so let me just share my screen i guess you people can see my screen okay so basically this is a diagram for the architecture so we can look at the diagram later so guys let's suppose there is a tool that tool has like 4 million logins per second now just think what if someone somehow manages to get unauthorized access to the tool server. Now what he does is he changes the login API redirection of the tool. So as the user logins, he gets redirected to malicious web page that downloads a ransomware in the user's device. Now just think there are 4 million logins per second. 4 million users will be affected by ransomware and guys that too per second. So guys, this can be a next wave of cyber pandemic. So guys, let's suppose 4 million people are using that tool and 4 million people log in into that tool and that ransomware gets downloaded into that tool due to one single domain hijacking that that tool can download a ransomware in like 4 million pieces per second and what will happen is that 4 million people have to kind of either lose the data or they have to provide a ransom in million dollars you, you know how bad this can go yes guys that's the problem. Not just that. That ransomware may take the data of 4 million users as well as can use that for their own malicious work as well. To prevent this cyber pandemic, I present a solution. This is called Ankit's Secure Architecture. This is an event-driven architecture but with a difference. So once the user does some task from the UI example login, an event is created. This event has a random ID. Not only that, it will add a domain with a random token. For example, ankitvashishta.com slash a random token ABCDEFGHI. Okay, there is one thing. Now, when he logs in the data of the user, the data goes to Redis. So for example, we can call that Redis, Redis1. Now coming back to event that was created, the event is connected to another Redis. We can call it Redis2. Now the event has nothing. The event is blank. It only has a set of instructions as of what it needs to take from the read and the write leg. Now what is read and the write leg? there won't be any payload and response in the event okay there will be a read lake if we look at the diagram there is a read lake and a write lake okay guys so of course we will be keeping up a backup of the read lake and the write lake as well okay guys so basically we can call it a redis lake Yes, so now what is read and write lake? There won't be any payload and response in the event. There will be a read lake 
it contains various set of classes or methods. Each method will determine what payload we can take. Now coming towards response, there will be a right leg. Okay, guys, that right leg will contain. Uh, let me just open the image. That right leg will contain the data, the databases. Okay. Okay, so basically, there will be a right lake that will contain classes and methods to get the response. Right lake will have databases corresponding to each methods and classes. There can be a single database for multiple classes and methods, or there can be multiple databases. Read and write lakes will contain backup in another server. So guys, we have read lake and write lake here and we will generate a backup in another server. Okay, guys. Read and write lake in another server. So we can perhaps run a clone that will backup read and write lakes to somewhere else. Coming back to the event, the event has a token ID and set of instructions as of what it needs to take from the read and write link. So consider the token ID has a postman. Okay, guys. So whenever the postman goes, he will pass through the read and write, write links. Let's suppose it's, don't consider it a postman, consider it a delivery agent. So the thing is that the delivery agent reaches to, to the read and write lakes. We can say that's a person who would kind of take the shipment and will give the money. Okay. So before the reaching that read and write lake means the person who will take the money and who will give the money and take the shipment, he has to pass through a gate man. Okay. So, so that gateman is an authorization service. Okay. The gateman will ask the event to share the token ID. He will ask him that uh, share the token ID. If he will provide the right token ID, then only he will be able to meet the read and write lake. Okay. The read and write lake will take the token ID from Redis 2 and will authorize the event. Once the event is authorized. The event can go to read lake and take the instructions to get the payload and write lake to give the response or do the required task. Okay. One task is once the task is done, the event ID is destroyed so that there remains no traces of what the task was, what the ID was, what the token was. Everything is destroyed. But the data, however, will go to Cassandra DB. And uh, let's suppose the event ID fails to give the right token ID. Then also the log will go to Cassandra DB that uh, someone has penetrated or there is some issue. We have to fix that. Okay. So, of course, we can just kind of take that log. And we can just put it as a record. We can make it go to Hadoop. We can perform a Spark function. We can do some machine learning to get to kind of give a detail of what, how we can use it, how means what type of data is it. We can perform some machine learnings to prevent future hijacking, or and also we can and he. And the thing is that even when the token ID is right, we can again send the data to Cassandra and we can pass it to Hadoop and Spark and we can do machine learning to understand the users who, from multiple areas, what type of user, what exactly user wants. So somehow we can perform a machine learning. 
so so the best part is that let's suppose a person kind of hijacks a domain somehow even if he got to know the token id somehow he hijacks again but the thing is once he hijacks he won't be able to hijack another time cause the token is destroyed and a fresh token will be built so this will kind of reduce the hijacking ransomware and the kind of domain hijacking and the ransomware however still if there is something suspicious that the traffic is like went really down then there are chances that the your domain might have hijacked or the traffic is coming like less than expected or there might be some other causes so if the traffic is less than the traffic that is already there then it will be notified again that the traffic is like really less so that so that the person or the company can be alert and can do the needful okay guys so guys please comment about this architecture and do like share subscribe to my channel press the bell icon and i'll be sending more of such architecture soon okay guys thank you uh, goodbye